Hi, Christy here at Tinker Art Studio in Boulder, Colorado. If you've joined us for some of our previous workshops, you know that I have been guiding children through creating art projects by intending for them to be watching the videos and making along with me, just like if we were in a workshop here in the studio. In today's workshop, I am going to be sharing with parents how to create simple art invitations that you can set up at home. Let's get started. So specifically, I am going to be showing you three different painting techniques that you can introduce to your children with some pretty basic materials that you likely already have at home. Now here at Tinker, we have a class called Tinker Time where we set up different invitations to create all around the studio and the children get to move freely around the space, creating artwork and collecting it as they go. It's a really fun class because it encourages that complete creative control and freedom. And there are so many places in our kids' lives where we have to set boundaries and set expectations and even you know, tell them no, where that when we get to introduce art materials in a new and exciting way to them and give them complete creative control over the process, it can really help balance that out in um, just in our lives and in our households with our kids. So these materials and the um, processes that I'll be showing you today are suitable for kids about age two all the way through 10 or 12, even around age 18 months once kids are um, sort of moving past that place of just putting everything in their mouths and exploring it that way um, would be suitable for these types of projects or that age would work well. Now, you know your kid best, so especially on that lower end, you'll kind of have to gauge if these projects are appropriate for them. I'm gonna be showing you these different painting processes in uh, each one individually. And then at the end of this workshop, I am going to show you introducing these materials with my own two-year-old at home for the very first time. So if you have a very young child, it might you might enjoy sticking around to the very end and kind of seeing it in practice and seeing it in action. We'll see how it goes. I have not yet introduced any of these processes to her um, because she just turned two. So we're just starting to kind of get into some of this. All right, let's take a look at the materials that we'll need today. These are the materials we'll need for marble painting. For all of the three painting processes I am going to be showing you today, you will need a stack of paper. I would recommend just having a nice stack so that you can do multiple of these. In addition to paper, you'll need a box. This is a, a Lysol box, so just any type of tray, like cardboard flat, where you can roll marbles back and forth. And then these are just containers with a little bit of tempera paint in them, um, a spoon in each container, and I drop one or two marbles in each container. For foamy painting, we use foaming soap dispensers, and this is specifically the foaming kind of soap dispenser. Fill it up with a little bit of water, maybe a quarter of the way. Add liquid watercolor or food coloring or tempera paint and mix it together to dye that water. And then add a pretty generous squirt of um, dish soap to get it really nice and bubbly. Shake it up so that it mixes all around. You can always play with the amount of dish soap and water you have if your mixture isn't quite working, if you wanna add a little more dish soap to get it even foamier. I like to use the primary colors, yellow, red, and blue, so that kids can later, after they've worked with this process a bit, make discoveries about the secondary colors when they start combining them on their paper. In addition to your uh, foaming soap dispensers with the mixture inside, you'll of course need some paper, but that's it. For our scrape or smear paintings, we will be using tempera paint. These are already in squeeze bottles. That can work well for this process. If you have a dropper or a pipette like this, 
that is my preferred way to um, to do smear or squeeze paintings. I just put it in a container and then add a little bit of water to it to help it suck up into the dropper more easily. And then kids can drop it onto their paper like that. That helps control the amount of paint that goes down on the paper. But you can also use your paint right out of the bottles, um, either out of squeeze bottles like this or just out of the bottles that you have. The other thing you'll need is some type of scraper. We also sometimes use an actual squeegee. This is just an old gift card. An old gift card or credit card works really well. Some tape is helpful to be able to tape your, your paper down so that it doesn't kind of pull away as you're scraping. So setting up your space. This is really important because like I mentioned, we call these invitations to create or art invitations. And we use that term, which you might've heard before, because we wanna set up the space in exactly that way, in an inviting way where the children can take a look at the materials, take a look at the table and be really excited to jump right in and be prepared to get started without much explanation from us um, as teachers or parents or facilitators. So now um, there's a little caveat to that with really young kids. With very young children, we do need to introduce them to the materials um, with a little more explicit context about how to use something, depending on what the material is. So we can take a look at that a little later when I introduce some of these projects to my two-year-old. With older children, hopefully the materials will be set up in such an inviting fashion that you won't need to give any explanation of how to use it. And it's really fun to see kids jump right in and, and pull out the um, different types of things that you have available to them and see how they put them together in their own artwork. And we can actually encourage that sense of autonomy and independence by stepping back and not giving them instruction on how to use the material. So with our goal being to support our kids to engage in the process right away, there are a few things we can do to help that along. And you might have heard that term before, process art, and it's really just about the process being the place where the discoveries and inquiry um, and the real magic happens rather than looking for a specific finished product that we want our um, artwork to be like. So with these process art invitations to create, what we can uh, do to help support our kids in engaging in them is to set up the supplies in a inviting fashion. So that's the first thing to pay attention to when you're setting up your, um, your art invitation, no matter what it is. If you can use baskets or plates or other ways that you can just organize your materials on the table, that will go a really long way in having your kids take a look when they first enter or look at the table in front of them and be really excited to jump right in. The second thing you can do to support this is limit the materials that you're offering. So you can always add more materials later on, but to start, think about limiting the materials that you're offering so that the kids value um, what is in front of them more heavily, and it'll also encourage them to make more careful selections about their work. Sometimes it can be overwhelming when you have too much choice, so limiting materials can be really helpful. The third piece I want to share with you right now is a little bit about your language on how you introduce the table for the first time when your child sees it. So we want to try to give as minimal instruction as possible uh, that your child might need, kind of depending on their age and just who they are as a kid, to get them to jump right in right away. So this might take a little while. If you have a child who, um, who seeks a lot of reassurance or who really likes to be told or wants to be told what to do and how to use the material. So um, you, it might take a little while to kind of walk that back and get to a place where they are excited to make those discoveries without the explanation. So you can encourage that and move in that direction by modeling inquiry for them and asking open-ended questions. So saying things like, I see 
a um, gift card or a credit card down um, on the table today. What do you think we might use that for? That's not something we usually use in art, I wonder. So asking a lot of those, um, uh, making observations, saying just objectively what you see, and then modeling that inquiry of wondering what it could be used for. I see a soap dispenser out on our painting table today. I wonder what we can use with a soap dispenser for in our artwork. What ideas do you have? So engaging in the conversation and the dialogue fully, not just saying, here you go, good luck, um, but in a way where we're turning it back, giving that ownership back to our children to make the decisions and sort of experiment and invent that experience uh, for them for the very first time, rather than us showing them how it should be. So um, there is, <laughs> I could go off on a whole nother workshop about language and how to talk to our children about their artwork. So maybe we'll do that another time. But those three things, um, organizing your materials in an inviting fashion, limiting the materials that you put out on the table, and giving as minimal instruction as possible while still engaging in open-ended inquiry and a conversation with your kids when you uh, introduce the table to them, those three things can really help make your invitations to create successful. Sorry about that last bit of audio. I forgot to plug the microphone back in. Okay, so to start with marble painting, I am going to just scoop my marbles from the container right into the box and then roll them around. This is a really fun process because it's, um, it has a lot of motion and movement to it, of course. So it's fun to stand up while kids uh, do this type of painting, or um, they can, you know, of course be sitting down, but getting lots of motion and some kind of gross motor movement in. I like to put my marbles back in between um, colors, but of course a lot of kids will just scoop and continue scooping their marbles and use all of them at the same time, which is totally fine as well. There's really, um, of course, no right or wrong way to do this. That's kind of the whole point of these invitations. And you'll find that this one is just really engaging for kids of all ages. You can have some fun with color mixing here too if you were to use the primary colors rather than um, a different mixture like this. It is a lot of fun to make multiples of these and then you can cut them up and use them in uh, other artwork like collage or other pieces or fold them and use them as cards. Um, they always just turn out so fun and interesting. For our foamy painting, since this mixture is all made up, we're just going to pump the foam paint onto the paper. Now this one is really fun uh, for young kids because you can also just kind of smear the foamy paint around and it's a really nice kind of sensory tactile experience. The woohoo! <laughs> this one's squirting out more. The, um, the pieces when they dry, I sometimes like to take something to kind of scrape the foam off after I've put it on. Or you can just kind of leave it on and let it dry as is. It just kind of dyes your paper. There's some other painting processes that we can do to actually make bubble prints, whereas this just kind of dyes the paper with really interesting um, designs in the end. But this one is really fun for, again, for color mixing and also just for that kind of um, tactile experience. With smear or scrape painting, I prefer to use these um, pipettes or droppers like I mentioned because kids can really have a lot of control over squeezing the paint on the paper without uh, squeezing a ton of it on. So you can also do this process just with 
paint right out of the bottle, you will probably notice that kids want to squeeze a lot of paint on the paper, depending on the age of your child, which is a really fun activity just in and of itself. But you are the um, expert on your own child and on your comfort level with what you're doing at your house and kind of the amount of mess that might be that might be created. So uh, you know, you could also, this might look like rather than your kid squeezing the paint on the paper, you squeezing it on the paper the first few times to model for them what you want to see as far as how much paint goes on the paper. It is totally up to you kind of how you want to support and the uh, level of mess and kind of the control on this process. So I'm just holding the card kind of at a 45 degree angle and scraping across the paper. This one's really fun because you just never quite know how it's going to turn out. You could always go in and add more drops on the paper and then try squeezing or <laughs> try uh, scraping in another direction. See what happens there. That's kind of fun. Different color combinations, of course, turn out really differently. So this one is a lot of fun to play with. Now let's take a look at some of this in action with my two-year-old. We'll see how it goes. So I wanted to show you how to introduce this to a young child. I had talked a little bit about not introducing the materials too much and letting them really jump right in. Um, this is my daughter, Calla. She just turned two a couple months ago and she's never seen the materials set up this way before. So because we're using marbles, I'm gonna show her the marble painting first. Um, I do want to introduce these materials to her. With older children, they might already kind of know how these things work and it's actually pretty cool she just took the um, you like to use green she just took the spoon and kind of um splattered some paint in there but Kala, i would like to show you a new way of painting with marbles we're going to use the spoon to scoop the marbles out of the container dump them in the tray just like that and then i'll set this aside and watch I can roll the marbles around and make a painting. You try. Her little brother is sitting over here too. So, whoa! So I gave her just a very brief introduction and now she's rolling the marbles around. Oh, Kala, I see that you made a long line across your paper here. It's two. There's two marbles. And I can roll them. You can roll them. And I'm making observations that are just really objectively noticing, telling her what I notice and what I see. It's sliding, and the balls are rolling, the marbles are rolling back and forth when you move the box. Kala said the marbles are rolling back and forth. So I'm modeling, making observations to her, and then she often, um, she then gets experience and practice making observations about her artwork. No, Would you like to try scooping out the white marbles? Whoa. No, no, no. I do. You'd like to hold it? Kala really likes to do everything by herself. Wow. I wonder what these marbles will do in the bucket or in the box with the paper. And you're scooping some more paint in. So I'm going to let her just enjoy this process and really kind of take her lead. Because this is so contained in a box, it's a pretty low mess, um, 
way that I can do painting with her, introducing some new materials. I also only filled the containers a really small amount, knowing that they're gonna get pretty mixed together and that'll make it easier to just wash and um, offer some fresh new paint later for another activity. So now I'm gonna show Kala um, the foam painting or bubble painting with the uh, foam soap dispensers. So Kala, you know how to use a soap dispenser. That's what this is. I'm gonna help you by holding your paper up and let's make sure it's, yep. And just push down and see what happens. Whoa, what came out? <laughs> Yellow. This is foamy painting. This one, hold on just a sec, Kelly, let me straighten it for you. Okay, let's do it together. And I'm gonna move the paper to get the foam on the paper. Keep going. Let's try using the palm of your hand and push down. Good, you're using your big muscles. So this one is really pretty intuitive because we've had a lot of practice hand washing. Um, it's just that Kala is still kind of getting enough, you know, strength and coordination to be able to push things, push it down. You'd like to do it all by yourself. my Oh, you're using your muscles. Whoa, you're putting yellow foam paint on the paper. You can make the colors of the yeah. rainbow? <laughs> this is also a really fun color mixing activity if you use the primary colors. So um, we're using blue and yellow right now. Kala, when blue and yellow mix together, what color does it make? Yeah. What color? Yeah. Green. Green. Yes. So she can see that when blue and yellow are mixing, we have blue, we have yellow, and then they mix together and they make? Yellow. What color do they make? Green. Ah. Green. Together. Why? <gasps> Let's try again. Would you like to try again? So I'm just going to let her enjoy this and um, kind of see where she goes with it. This is a pretty fun one because of that sensory experience that I mentioned. You'd like some help? Yeah. Let's see. Let's see if this will work. So now I just got the materials out for um, scrape painting. And Kala has just put some green on her paper. Kala, I'm gonna show you another color. Here's white or purple or blue. What color would you like to add next? Blue. blue. I have these little pipettes in mind. They work really well for kids to be able to squeeze to add the paint onto their paper into smaller amounts. And Kala, I'd like to show you how I squeeze. Oh, here, let me squeeze up some more paint for you. I added just a little bit of, um, just a little bit of water to my paint and mixed it in so that it's a little easier to squeeze the paint up. Okay, now Kala, squeeze. Whoa! Yeah, I do. You want to do it by yourself, yeah. yes. I, here is some white paint, Kala, that you can squeeze. No, I don't want my hair. Yeah, it's for you to do. I'll squeeze. Yes. Okay, now, Kala, we're going to take this scraper 
and scrape across our painting. Let's do it together this time. No, I don't you, want my room. Okay, you'd like to do it? Yeah. Okay, here. Scrape. Yes! Wow! Keep going, keep scraping. Wow! So I thought I was gonna to need to show her how to do that scraping motion. Um, we have not done any of these paintings before, by the way. So this is the first time she's being introduced to them. But she very much knew just what to do. So we're gonna keep making some scrape paintings. Wow. And then um, let all of our pieces dry. I hope that you enjoy doing some of this with your kids at home. And remember to try to let go of any expectations you have about the, about the result and how this will all go, and just enjoy the process and really follow your kids' leads. Remember that this is the place where kids can take risks and push boundaries and make new discoveries right in front of their eyes um, within the supportive container that you set up for them in the process of these art invitations. So if you enjoyed this workshop, I hope that you will check out our brand new online studio. There's a link in the video description. And the first course in our online studio is called Tinker Time. And it's all about art invitations using materials that you likely already have on, home, on hand at home with your kids. So in addition to talking more about um, language that is really supportive and language you can use to talk to your kids about their artwork and just more in depth about the philosophy behind all of this and why it's so important probably most importantly in the course is a whole library of different process art invitations that you can set up at home easily with your kids. They're organized in really digestible chunks so that you can pick and choose ones and have a whole um, sort of bank to pull from when you're ready to set more invitations up or set up daily invitations for your kids. So I hope you'll check it out and um, be sure to like and subscribe to this video too so that you can see even more workshops from us as we keep releasing them in the coming weeks. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.